Welcome back to In The Box. I'm Sandy Plashkis. If you haven't already, make sure to head over to Instagram and follow us at Owner's Box. Then head down below to like, comment, and subscribe to let YouTube know that we are fire. On today's episode, we talk about the state of college football, the NBA bubble MVP, the NBA new bubble visitation rules, and also our in-house Owner's Box NHL playoff bracket challenge. Let's get right into it. Looking at the landscape, we've been talking about all the professional leagues lately. We've seen some leagues start. We've heard some buzz about the NFL and the sketchy situation there. (laughs) And then this morning, or yesterday evening, in fact, we heard the Pac-12 and the Big Ten canceled their fall football season this year. The Big Ten was the first to do it, and then the Pac-12 followed suit immediately. Mm -hmm. Do you think, after hearing that news, that we'll see any college football this year? Um, well, I'm going to start by saying you're definitely our, our college guy. Um, but, um, I think that we will, um, because I think that everything's kind of being played by ear. Um, as soon as we start seeing some more positive results, especially on, on the side of the Americans, if we're talking NCAA, um, they'll start retracting their statements. If, if, that, if that's the case, and then yeah. we'll start to see more things coming back rather than them sticking to their word of cancellations. Yeah, I'm thinking about it too. And it's like, it's a little early, right? I think there's obviously more factors play into college football than NFL do. And obviously the NFL teams have way more money and resources to do so. That said, you know, a lot of these schools, you know, they, they demand football. Like they rely on football to even let these programs go forward and other like, you know, your, your girl sports, Mm -hmm. you know, some of your smaller boys sports as well. Like they rely on football for revenue. So it's going to be interesting to see like a lot of these SEC schools. The Big 12 actually said this morning that they still plan to release a schedule at some point this week for this fall. So you're seeing just in case you're seeing. (laughs) So I don't know if that means, oh, they're going to plan on playing or not. I have heard, you know, the SEC has been the one conference who said, you know, we want to play. You've heard Nick Saban, you know, the Alabama coaches say that they want to play. Like they're doing all this testing pretty much. I heard four times a week is their testing in the bigger schools. And like, that's a ton of testing. They make big sponsorship dollars too, right? Yeah. It's all, okay. I mean, of course, like the I bigger just, schools, confirm. the TV contracts, all that stuff. Yeah. They, I mean, it's harder for like a, you know, a bowling green, like a D2 school, you know, it's not realistic for them to play. Like the D3s, like the IVs, the smaller D1s, they all cancel their season early and they were the first to do it just because they don't have the resources. I'm pretty sure yeah. that's the main driver for that. But then you look at the SEC and like, these guys are like, we want to play. Even the players, like, they want to play. Well, but how many of these commits are sitting in these rosters being like, this was my chance oh to my get noticed, yeah, to get drafted, to start a career? I mean, it's interesting to think about because think about all these guys like Justin Fields at, at Ohio State. Yeah. Like, this was his go off year. Like he played well last year, was a Heisman candidate. He was he was going to be a first like, round, he was gonna, second round but candidate like, anyway. Right? This was his year to like pump his draft stock. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like. Yeah. Trevor Lawrence, I mean, he, even if he doesn't play, that guy's going first, first overall. Round. Yeah, he's going to go first to wherever <laughs> top, he goes. Top but three. I just don't think there's a lot of athletes at these bigger schools that are falling subject to this. Like Joe Burrow tweeted, I don't know if you saw this, Eddie, you might want to pull this up, but he tweeted, he goes, a year ago, if this was me a year ago, like he was a nobody before yeah, last exactly. year. Like exactly. think about his shoes. Yeah. Like he took advantage the best anyone oh, ever yeah. has of his situation and made a, his name. I watched a graphic of like his um his odds to win uh, Heisman I believe. Yeah, when he started. And, and it was like it was like plus 30,000 or something yeah, stupid some like that week number. 1. Yeah. I just it's interesting because you see guys like that and you could tell the players are want to play and like mm-hmm. they I feel like they know more than anyone else because they're the ones in the in the training rooms getting yeah. tested like all, they're going through the protocols like the professional athletes are yeah. and you know the real question is the like, do you think it's too early? Like, I think it's too early to cancel. I don't, I mean, I don't know all the stuff going on behind the scenes, mm-hmm. but we got months, we got a few months to go. I know there's going to, there's going to be new things coming out. The NFL has said they're playing. So it's, it's just different for a professional league. So I think it's too early though. What do you think about it? I think it's definitely too early. And I think it's definitely too early because of the way that things are being handled in the States. We've said this before. I think when we were talking about the bubbles and the MLB um, about how, are you really better off by not playing rather than going to your facility, staying with the same guys day in, day out, um, and getting regular testing? So I, I think the whole reason that they're saying, you know what, we're just canceling it, is so that they're the ones that aren't responsible for, for these positive tests that are going to happen anyway because these guys are going out. They're going to clubs. They're going to go get wings. Yeah. Think about, I mean, I just graduated university a few years ago. Yeah. Like, I'm just sitting here thinking like these guys are what in their young twenties, if not early late teens. Right. And 
if they're just sitting around doing nothing, they're more likely to go do some stupid shit, exactly. go drink with their buddies, go interact with non-athletes than they are when they're focused on football. Like these yeah. guys in a football scenario, like I played myself in college D3, but still counts, still <laughs> counts. counts, counts somewhere. But I mean, the schedule is every single day. Like you don't have downtime. Like you're not going to go get hammered with exactly. your buddies at the bar, or go, you know, do anything else other mm -hmm. than football related activity. Yeah. Right. So looking at it from that perspective, I think you're right when you said it's about the legal side. I think there's a lot of people that want to see football not happen. And I think there's a lot of lawyers involved in these conferences. And the like, parents and the and the, the alumni. Well, the parents, but the thing is, it's different because it's like the the school itself is, and then the parents and the players are on one side because the parents have been backing the players lately. You see like all these tweets saying like, we want to play, like that hashtag that's trending, it's like, we want to yeah. play. Does the NCAA have a have like a, a players association like the pro league? No, leagues? they do not. So that's okay. the big point. So I was listening to Stephen A. this morning. It's like they don't have a commissioner of the NCAA. Like there's not one overpowering voice. It's basically yeah, okay. the, the president of the conference. Right. And there's like what five power five. There's five big ones. Yeah. And they all have varying opinions, right? Or they most likely do, right? Mm -hmm. So there's like you'll see the Pac-12, Big Ten. They're like we're not even going to risk any liability, all that shit. And then you have the SEC's commissioner or president who's like, we want to play. Like, we want to find a way to play. So so in that, in, how in is that, that regard, could you have, like, individual teams opting out? That's what, Well, I don't even know how the structure would work. I think it's based off conference. And I think okay. the SEC, like, if they were to play, they would play in conference. And it would be yeah. less games. It would be a shorter season, obviously, because I think it's half their games are in conference and the right. other half are out conference. So okay. in the SEC's case, they'd play their in-conference games and then – I think from there they just either find other teams to play outside or yeah. just shorten the season. I think ultimately for that for the college season to happen at all, it's going to have to be shortened. Yeah, they'd have to dummy all those bowl games and. But like, yeah, and, but it's it's interesting to think about it because you don't see I don't know, like in Alabama like they're a great team. They have tons of money. Like oh, they yeah. get they make millions billions off their game. Like you know these guys have money to spend, so they're going to be more you know for the well, season. It's just as popular as an NFL team well, if there was one or in yeah, that area. exactly. Like, and like they're imagine their fan base, like their yeah. local Alabama people. Like they're probably, that's all they have on Saturdays. Yeah. Like that is what they live their for. Their tailgates like, are better than the Bills. Like <laughs> I don't know about all that, but wow, well, hey, go to one. <laughs> but like football season, it's like a religion down there. Mm -hmm. Like the la I think the fans, the parents and the players are all on one side, and it's like the school and the conference almost feels obligated to, you know, make sure there's no legal shit involved. Because yeah. ultimately a legal suit, if one thing happens, like any oh, player yeah, yeah, gets yeah. COVID and then like something really gets bad really happens to sick them, or yeah. yeah, that could not only end the season, that could, you know, put a lot of the, the league, program, put like, the program in jeopardy yeah. and put the actual conference in jeopardy too because yeah. they were pushing for playing, right? So there's a big divide there. They have to really have their arm turned on it to to get in. Yeah, it's just like looking at, I heard Stephen A. talking this morning. It's like four times a week testing. They're being watched very, very closely yeah. by these trainers. Like, they're not going to get a better treatment outside. Like, if I was a parent, wouldn't you want your kid in that scenario? You'd like think if, so, right? I mean, if especially if my son was in, like, in the fight to go to the NFL. Like, that's oh. his career. Like, that is, this year could be his well, future. your retirement. I'm saying, yeah, <laughs> your retirement and your, and your future income yeah. going forward. Yeah, but it's just interesting because I, I know there's two sides to it, but there's no one that can convince me that there's, you're not safer in a, not a bubble format, but a very closely monitored exactly. situation like that. And well, then you have those parents that think, oh, my kid can't do anything wrong. He'll yeah. just stay at home seven days but a week. It's not that they're staying home. Is they're still like campuses. Yeah, exactly. They're still having students on campus, which is crazy. So like my brother went back to school to yep. Indiana today. They're having thousands and thousands of students on campus and they're doing a lot of the big 10 schools are doing a split between online and off like in-person classes. Mm hmm. So my whole thing is you're having in-person classes, but you can't have, and you're, those guys aren't getting tested. You're not testing all those thousands of students no, so every what's day. really the difference? Not only once a week. They're getting tested four times a week, these athletes. So like what, if it's a safety concern, I don't see why they can't be in that really monitored environment and actually figure out a way to play. At least let them start practicing and see how it goes, yeah. right? You can't, if Get you cancel it now, you're not going to be, oh, we're going to play. Like, oh shit, like two weeks from now, we're going to play. Like, it yeah. just doesn't work like that. If you they're going to be mean? in class together, they might as well be on the field together. And that's what I'm saying. These athletes, now the Big Ten guys, they're going to be in class. They're going to be in person. Yeah. Like, most of them probably won't attend class after they don't <laughs> football grades to keep up. So, like, <laughs> screw it. But Oops. I just, I think a lot of the kids will have their draft stock drop, which is a shame. Oh, yeah. Like we talked about the pre in the NFL's regard, like with all the newcomers, all the rookies, they're going to miss out on opportunities. 
now it's even worse on this side of it because those guys are already in the league. You know yeah. what I mean? These guys are working to get there, and there's a lot of guys on the fence that are look that teams are looking at to draft. But if they don't have think, tape senior year, their last year of yeah, college, yeah. what's going to happen? Think two, three years down the road, all those undrafted free agents. Oof, those will be spicy. Oh my! No yeah. preseason though. Yeah, well, it's just gonna be, it's <laughs> gonna be a mess. And I think the fact that they canceled them so early, I guess not so early, but earlier than all the like, you can't just pack. They're big. They're the big five. Like all yep. these conferences, if half of them cancel, but the other half want to play, like they should at least have some kind of you know middleman. They have a discussion about it before they all just yeah. start canceling, right? Yeah. So I don't know. We're gonna see how it plays out. Back to my original question. I think we see college football this year. Hot take. That is a hot take. Doesn't wouldn't surprise me. Like honestly, it's it's teams need it, and I think the players are pushing for it. And I think if they keep pushing, like the NBA pushed for that for the social justice stuff, got it done. Mm-hmm. MLB players pushed for health and safety protocols, eventually got it done. Like I think if there's enough you it know, just power takes behind enough. the movement, yeah, exactly. that it will actually happen. But you have to create the protocol first, and then be convinced out of it. Like, what do you think the Pac-12 and you know Pac-12 and Big 12 guys are doing right now, or Big 10 10. and Pac-12 are doing right now. They're just looking at it like, hey, we're done. Like, let's not even figure out a way to play. Like, if you if you're doing that, you're just there's no way for you to recover. There's there's enough of them that are sitting on their computers finding out how they can convince. I think it's I don't know where the who's doing the decision making. Obviously the presidents, but there should be like a players association or some sort of commissioner. I know it's not like a professional league. Exactly. But they're gonna start paying players now in the NCA. Like exactly when uh, don't they get they're getting royalties too off the uh, off the video game too? Yeah, go yeah, the NCA. By the way, I'm so fired up for that. Were you, did you <laughs> ever play that? Um, I, I, not really. The only thing the I remember going to NCAA Buddy's place 14. in the basement playing like, like, like the mascot mode or yeah, something. Yeah. Syracuse, <laughs> like so funny. <laughs> but yeah, looking at it, it's just like all this stuff coming in. Then there's a lot of change coming in. So ultimately, I feel like a commissioner that could speak for the entire, you know, D at least D1 athletics, especially for football, mm-hmm. since it's the most powerful sport by mm-hmm. far. Like that would be huge. So as I said, some kind of committee. I think we see football, college football this year. Mark this down. We'll revisit. Next topic. NBA bubble MVP. So the NBA announced today that there will be an MVP of the bubble seeding games. And the awards will be announced this coming Saturday prior to the first game of the Western Conference play-in series. This is a this is a lock, isn't it? I don't know. Like, I'm looking at the list of guys in front of me. And there's these are the candidates to win it based off what I read this morning. Dame. Devin Booker. Okay. Damian Lillard. Luka Doncic. Harden. Giannis and TJ Warren. Okay, I was really hoping that TJ Warren was going to be on that list. So, but you know who decides it, right? The MVP is chosen by a panel of writers and commentators who have been in the bubble. So it's no one outside, it's everyone who's seen the play. So it's going to be, I don't know how many there are, I don't know how it's going to be weighed out, but Mm -hmm. looking at the candidates, who do you think, of the ones I just named, who do you think takes it? And well, it's, is it like a, do you think it's a prestigious award to start? Like, let's start with that. No, no, it's kind of, it's kind of just for fun, like to give them something. And to start, I think you have to kind of cross off Harden and Giannis. I mean, I they haven't Even been. Even though Harden went off, like they went crazy. Giannis is just on there because they've he's been for missing MVP. games. They've been resting. Like, really, I mean, you're not an MVP if you're. Well, look at this. You know who also was resting? Luca rested, not last game, but the game before. But Devin Booker and Damian Lillard, they're playing their hearts Every out because game. they have that eight seed. Yeah. That, that shit's going to be crazy. That's what I was going to say. I don't even think there's much contest. I think it's got to be Dame. He went over 60 points 60, last night. In fact, like, 61 last night. I mean, he was the first player since Will, Will Chamberlain, Chamberlain yeah, to, to go over it. 63 times in a season. Like, I don't know. You're breaking How records. Did, I mean, it. he's doing it in the bubble, too, like a, yeah. a new environment. Bubble MVP, I don't think they give a fuck, honestly. Maybe Damian does because he's getting shit. Yeah, like yeah. that whole Clippers debacle where him and he was going at Pat Bev and then mm-hmm. some of the, like Paul George saying he's going to send him home. Mm-hmm. I saw some unreal memes about that. It's like, <laughs> Paul, it was like, it was, um, he was walking, it was Damian Lillard, like a meme of him walking into like a cafeteria. He's like, when he walks in and sees Pat Bev and, and Paul George at the breakfast table in the morning and it was him just like smiling mm-hmm. with a troll face on. It was so funny. I've seen that tweet. I don't know how to quote it one on one, but yeah. He was, <laughs> I just think, you know, it comes down to Damian Lillard and Devin Booker. I think the, De- uh, the Book, Suns though, sleep on D book. They're in it. The Suns, they're tied. I think, but they're Portland, like just in it, right? Portland. I'm gonna look it up right now, but I know off the top of my head that Portland and the Suns are tied for eighth. Okay. Cause those are, yeah. In that case, those are the two that really should be considered the Pacers with, with TJ Warren. They're already in. So I'm not sure you could really consider Warren as heavily as you can consider the other two, given what he's fighting for. But so here's the layout right now. Okay, so the Trailblazers after last night's win, 
have sole right of the eighth seed at 34 and 39. So is that locked up then? No, because the Grizzlies are 33 and 39. So they're a half game back. And then the Suns are 33 and 39, a half game back from the. Oh, yeah. And yeah. then the Spurs are also a half game back at 32 and 38. That's so there's right. four the, teams. The there's, West is pretty well. Do yeah. yeah. So I think what's going to come down to is a f- I think there's one, the Trailblazers have one more game. And they have to win. So if they don't win, they're in trouble unless the other three teams also lose. Right. There's going to be a play-in, though, I believe, yeah, between the so, eighth seed. So the, the eighth seed and the ninth seed will play a play-in if the ninth seed is less than four games back. Which they are. Yeah. Yeah. So there's it's, it's auto happening now. Yeah. Because I think there's only one. Who it's only, be. I think I know the Grizzly or the Trailblazers for sure only have one more game. So I know for a fact that that's happening, which is going to be crazy. You're going to see. I hope the Trailblazers and Suns face off like D book and Dame Lillard. Well, that'll they, be your, your MVP decision right there, I think. And they're announcing it. So they're announcing it Saturday. So these games are going to happen before then, I guess. It's a one game plan. Well, what are we today? Wednesday. We're Wednesday now. Yeah, it'll be. Well. Shit, that's gonna be close. Yeah, Saturday. Well, Saturday is the first round of the Western Conference. Wait, oh, I think then, it is yeah, Saturday. That's when be. it is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. So they'll announce it before the play-in games, mm-hmm. and then at that point, I think it just comes out of those two guys we just discussed. If they matched up, though, I would love to see them announce it after the <laughs> yeah. fact. So it's like extra um <laughs> for the them court to go off before they get off. But I, you know, looking at the playoff bracket right now, and I would pay a lot of money to see the Clippers versus the Portland Trailblazers. <laughs> but really. But that's wrong. But that's bad because they would beat my Lakers in that case. <laughs> so I don't want it to happen. But that would be must watch TV with the Paul George and Pat Bev versus yeah. Damian. That would yeah. be just so much beef. It's Lillard so is going to be forever for the rest of his career, like like the most underrated top five. Boston baby got it done. Let's go. Thank God. I needed this. I Let's needed go. this. You'll hear hey. all about it in a bit. Hey, I finally want to bet on the podcast. <laughs> Let's go. Hey. <laughs> I'm feeling great, living Not better, baby. Not feeling good, home. living Not better home. today. Think of all the apparel huge. you don't have to wear next time around. <laughs> I still owe I still owe our <laughs> listeners a ton of a ton of Raptors gear, and I will do that. But after going 0 and 5 throughout the first six episodes of In the Box, I have finally broke the seal. <laughs> broke baby. the seal. We are here. I'm winning. Continuing. <laughs> One pick. Gun to your head. Devin Booker versus Damian Lillard for Lillard. MVP. Lillard. I wouldn't even question it. I think I'm, it comes down to the last game. Who's going to play better? I'm going to fade you. and I'm going to take Booker just okay. to be the, you know, we're just going to play devil's advocate over here. Uh, I and think you're Devin, on a roll for winning, right? I think, <laughs> <laughs> so, I think, so if you have a bet on it, definitely take <laughs> Damian Lillard because I'm cold again. But anyways, I, I will take Devin Booker. I think okay. he's going to play his heart out. Dame will also do the same, but Devin Booker's had a sick resume this bubble. Yeah. Like he's been sh- that sh- that game winner, that fadeaway game winner in PG's face. Like that was epic. Like there's a lot of cool moments for both guys, but it's going to be a close one. We'll see how it goes, though. Right. One more thing regarding the NBA I want to talk about is the new NBA bubble visitation rules. Yeah, you were just telling me about this. this I, mean, gonna... <laughs> I read this. Woj tweeted this morning, uh, and I couldn't believe that it was real. Here's what it said. Four guests per each player plus children. Each player is allowed one ticket per playoff game for a guest plus an additional ticket for a child shorter than 32 inches. So they're <laughs> allowed then, four pl- four people plus children into the bubble, and then they can only invite one plus a child to the games? Yes, yeah, so four guests per player. I don't know how that's going to work with their room scenarios. Four guests. They like, must have extra rooms. Yeah, oh, they will. But, like, like how do they buy it? Like, they're, are they testing the, the people visiting, too? Like They have to, right? That's, like, I mean, it's... Well, well you heard about... Um, who said that Jalen Brown was he talking about like mental health in the bubble? He was tweeting about something. He's like, it's so hard, you know, playing basketball all day. Usually in a normal scenario, you get to go home and see your family, you know, do other shit. Yeah. But in the bubble, they're so confined to, you know, basketball, basketball, basketball. You go home so and get a phone call like jail. I think, you know, a lot of players supported him. And he said this about a week ago, I believe. And a lot of players came out and supported him and agreed that it was, you know, obviously tough away from families, mm-hmm. away from friends and all that. So I think that drove a lot of this. But I also read here, players will be allowed to bring in in quotes, established, long-standing personal friends. <laughs> How do we think the league will be able to determine or qualify someone as a established, long-standing <laughs> friendship? Like, I, you see stories about, like, Lou You're Will. like, go, check my Facebook, I swear. Like, yeah, you know, we've been friends for, like, two decades. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, like, I don't get, I don't know if that's going to, qual- like, put things in jeopardy. I know a lot of teams are exiting the bubble. Well, they, they're not making they've the done playoffs. so well testing negative that, like, 
I just hope you, ah, uh, I don't know. Like, they have it's just going to be so annoying the first time you get one. It's like, oh, fuck. Okay, here we go. It's going to be interesting to see because I don't know what's the people like, you know, the younger guys. Like, are they going to bring in Instagram models to the room? You know, <laughs> are they going to go get fine girls on the street and bring them in? Like, I don't know how they're going to. How do you get four people? You bring your mom, dad, and then two models. <laughs> <laughs> but like, how do you vet those people? Like, they must have some sort of protocol, I'm assuming. Like, mm-hmm. you have to have ID, like mark them down under your name, like all that shit. But yeah, at yeah. the same time. I feel like a lot of the younger guys will try to swing like some models in something there, or some of their stupid, girlfriends, yeah, friends, yeah, yeah. or something. You're gonna and get I think, like Matthew McConaughey in there. <laughs> like, what? I'm just worried, like a, a Lou Will 2.0 scenario. He's inviting the the Magic City girls to the to his room. Bring the wings. Yeah, <laughs> but like, I just it's gonna be cool to see if that hurts the the NBA state right now. I really hope it doesn't, especially it's going into playoffs. Like they've done so well. That's it. Like, like you, you, you just don't don't fix what's not broken. Like you guys are doing fine. You get your phone calls. I'm sure you're not hurting like that hard. Like, well, think about it this way: it's been what a few weeks now since they've started. Yeah. Each series goes. You know, it could go seven games, so it could go over a week, almost two weeks, right? So, yeah. and there's three or four series if you make it all the way. So some teams, you know, they're gonna be there for over a month and some mm-hmm. change, right? You and had the option to opt out. I like, know, they want to play. They want to not only. I don't know. If they opt out, they don't get paid. Like. I'm fucking going to play. Like it's it's a new scenario. Like they want to win. Not only that, they want to get paid. So it's both of those. Those guys had the choice. They made it. I get the fact that they're bumming about not having their family there. That's completely yeah. understandable. But I just hope it doesn't. You know, Lakers are going to the ship this year. I'm telling you. <laughs> if they if some bullshit happens with some fucking friends coming into the bubble, screwing everything up, <laughs> this is our year, man. We're looking like shit right now. But as I said, playoff bronze a different animal. I think the more hate the Lakers get now, the better. So I'm just hoping that some sort of scenario with with these visitation rules doesn't pile up on on the league, right? Is is LeBron's son, Bronny Jr. Yes. Is he is he playing right now? He's you know? in, he's in like high. He's a freshman, I believe. In no, high but school. I mean, like, is he like it's like is he in season right now? Like, is is he going to be like? Is he playing? I don't think they're playing yeah. right now. Okay, I don't think anything's happening in right, the high okay. school level. But well, I don't know about the he's state's going to think be he's going, su- he's going to be. He looks like exactly like his dad out there. He's yeah, dunking yeah. as a freshman, but LeBron's one no, of those I was just family. About the invites is if he's well, anyway. he has like LeBron has foot five family members, and it says <laughs> it says four guests per player. Like he's going to have to leave one of his kids out. Like hey, <laughs> I don't like you as much. You got to stay home. Like they probably, but like that's just so crazy. Keep working on your jumper. I just it's going to be cool to see the rooms and situations with everything all yeah. that shit but I just don't think I think it's a mess waiting to happen. I, I do too. I just can't see, I get it. I'm happy they're getting to see their families. I think everyone will be, you know, happier overall, but mm-hmm. I hope the end result isn't a cancellation cuz like if someone brings covid in, it's going to spread. Well, like I'm sure they'll do it just as well as they did when they started. They'll have a quarantine for those uh for those family members. You'll likely have to submit your list ahead of time. They'll test out of the bubble like but if they bring know. in their established friends, like what it's like that they just come for a day or like they're sta- they're locked in the bubble forever. Like that's yeah, right? the other thing, right? Like how does I didn't get as much insight to that because it was just put well, out this morning. You come in once, if you leave, you can't come back. Like I don't think, yeah, like that's the last thing they want yeah. is them coming and going. So maybe it's like a one time stop in. Like if you leave, you're done. Like, They've got enough on their plate testing the players. They don't want to have to regulate four family members per player in I, terms of quarantining. I ab- I absolutely agree, and I I don't think it will hurt the se- I don't think it will hurt the season because we're discussing no, no, the, no. how strict they're going to be about it. Yeah, but there's going to be those sketchy cases where it's like, yeah, how do you, there'll gonna be, be like, something not, funny. What if someone's like, they're not your longtime friend, get out, <laughs> you know, fuck off or something like that. So I, I think there's going to be some stir up there on like the dr- the drama side, but I don't think in the health and safety side, I think we'll be fine. Just yeah. you know, hoping we are. We got we got a lot of ball left, so looking forward to seeing the playoffs go forward. But you never absolutely. know with all this shit happening, so. Let's jump into another topic. We've been talking NHL. We've been talking our round one predictions. We've been talking all your bets that you like. Uh, we in house in owners box's office started a NHL playoff bracket pool. Of course. And we got all our employees in on it. And I want Devin and myself to walk through who we chose for round one, round two, the finals, and then who won the cup. So okay. pull up your bracket right now. <laughs> We will walk through each matchup and we'll see where we differed from each other. Because I think you said you picked a lot of dogs, right? Uh, no, I, I picked more than I did last time. And more that's of- where I'd actually like to start is I took a lot of heat from my buddies about going less than 50% on the play-in round. And 
<laughs> they vetted your picks. They write them down and oh, check no, you on they them. Just, uh, they're hockey guys too. They want to they, they want to make sure that I'm hurting to hear about it. I took a lot of the uh, a lot of the favorites, and I know I, you should you can't do that, but I didn't uh, I didn't lose on any one that that most other people didn't lose on either. So don't take this for gospel, but uh, uh, given the information well, that we have, nothing I say about NHL is gospel. I don't think anything <laughs> I say about betting in general has been gospel so far. I will turn it around, but in the case of NHL, you know. I was really spitballing on some of these picks. I had some outside help, but you know, I'm not. I won't say I'm so confident. In this I, bracket, I like. But I like my picks. My strategy was kind of to differentiate myself from people in the office. I know a lot of guys are. You guys are diehard hockey fans. Oh, yeah. I'm going to pick some unlikely matchups, <laughs> and we'll see how it plays out. So let's start with. You have your bracket pulled there now. Got it. Let's start with the first round: Vegas versus Chicago. Okay. One seed versus the eight seed. I think it's pretty straightforward who we both picked here. I took Vegas. What about you? This is one of my underdogs. I took Chicago. <laughs> Crazy man. Okay, in, so in Vegas. What's the Vegas score last night? Do you four know what, one. Four one. Four so one. they're up one zero now. They're up one zero. Uh, Chicago kind of surprised me um, with how well they did against Winnipeg, even given that Winnipeg didn't have all their stars in that lineup. Um, but they showed me a lot more than I thought they were going to. Um, and just with the pedigree they have on that roster and what they've done in the past, they've they've gone from from a low hanging fruit or from a low hanging seed um, to have success in the playoffs in the past with these same players. So I think that there's a chance they could do it again. And they uh, showed some pretty promising signs in uh, in their play in round. So I picked Vegas strictly because I love their logo and their uniforms, and I know they're be- I just know their top <laughs> seed, and I know they did well in the last year's playoffs too. So I'm riding with them this year. They're, are they a younger squad, or would you say they're a little more younger than Chicago? Yes. Oh, yeah. They are. So, yeah. I, yeah. I think I, you know, I like youthfulness. I like cool logos and team colors. So, I picked Vegas. I think that was my easy choice. That was probably my easiest choice of this bracket, to be honest. So, let's graduate down to two seeded Colorado Avalanche versus the seventh seed Arizona Coyotes. Um, Who did you take? I didn't even have to think about why I took them. I took Colorado. I did as well. Um, Reasoning. I mean, Colorado going in is a team that that I think most people pick to go to the finals. A lot um, of I I think you know over fifty percent of our I'm looking at our pool here. I think over fifty percent picked Colorado. Yeah. at least make it to the Stanley I, Cup. I think uh, I think if you're picking Arizona, you're 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 trying to make some money that you don't have already. So, <laughs> <We're>, um, <laughs> you're, what you're saying is that was this was probably your easiest choice in your bracket. Uh, yeah, that's one of the locks I would say. Arizona did really well in their play in series against Nashville. Um, I don't think that they have enough they in the tank to take out Colorado. So a healthy Colorado for each no. game. So I forgot to mention the first matchup we just discussed. You, you're supposed to pick the amount of games they complete the series. in. did you yeah. do that? Yeah. So, so I, I have had, actually I Colorado Vegas. sweeping. <laughs> you had them in four. Okay. Yeah. So for the Vegas, did you have them in what do you have? Are you I have Chicago in, in seven. Six. Okay. Chicago in six. So they're going to have to go pretty hot here for the next few. Yeah. Games. They can only afford one more loss. Okay. So I picked Vegas in five for that one. And then for Colorado versus Arizona, you picked a sweep. Yep. I picked five games. I as think well it's for my this. only sweep. Okay, I don't think I picked this. No, I did not. So I picked five for this one as well as the first matchup. So we'll see. I think has called. Have they played a game in the series yet? No. Is it today? Yeah. It does. Okay. So we'll see how that plays out. We both like Colorado though. So let's move on. Yep. Dallas Stars, the three seed, versus the Calgary Flames, the six seed. This is a really tough one. Um, Dallas has always, or for a long time, has been one of the better teams in the league going into the playoffs. Um. You wouldn't guess it by looking at the roster that they have, but they cannot score goals, and that's their issue. But they always seem to be one of the better teams. They I lost took, last night, right? They did lose last night, 3-2. It was close. Um, I took Dallas. I didn't know that they were going to be starting Hudobin instead of Bishop going in. Bishop's ben there. Bishop, yeah, no, I know. Fa- I have him in our right. owner's box league. He's a great goalie. Well, he didn't box play box last night. I didn't have him last night. No, but he I was usually deemed, draft him during the regular season. He was deemed unfit to play. Um, Do you I, know why? Was it some weird as excuse? The NHL doesn't want to tell anybody what the injuries are anymore. It's kind of weird. Is it COVID? I th- they won't even. <laughs> Fuck yeah. If, there's not. There's not even, like, not even a way to speculate it. So you took. You said you took Dallas, but you didn't know about the goalie situation. I, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm. I got Dallas. I really hope that they're switching in Bishop come their next game. Um, I think he could have stolen them a couple big saves, and they could have come up with a, with a shallow win there, but. I, this was the biggest toss up for me. I mean, I don't watch any call. I don't watch any Calgary hockey. I don't watch any Dallas Stars hockey throughout the regular season. I picked Calgary, but it was such a spitball. Like, I well, yeah, you can't way. really go wrong on this I, one. This is one of them. Just hey, you pick it and you go. I just thought a lot of people would pick Dallas because they're a higher seed. So I went. That was this is one of my dog picks here. Yep. Um, and I picked Calgary in six. Did I you got, pick? I got Dallas in seven. Dallas in seven. So hey, 
Not, it's hey, not over. One game. Hey, nope. There's still six more to I go. Need, I need Calgary to win three. Yeah. Why do you? <laughs> for for so Dallas seven. to win in seven. Oh, seven. There you go. Yeah. So, <laughs> hey, got, this got to start somewhere. So we yeah. both, we had differing picks here. So we'll see how that plays out. Let's move on. Number four, St. Louis Blues versus number five, Vancouver Canucks. This was a hard decision for me. Who did you pick? I didn't think that it was that hard of a decision. I took St. Louis, uh, reigning cup champions. Yeah, They're defending it. I don't think. And and they have that that playoff caliber lineup. They have those gritty guys that are going to go into the corners, bang, um, and they can score goals as well. Ryan O'Reilly is a guy that throughout the playoffs I'm going to pick in my pools to get me points. Um, big playoff guy. Um, I believe he won MVP last year. Don't quote me on that. I can't remember Hasn't off the top of my head. The reason I picked Vancouver is because I, I don't bet a bunch in NHL, but I have. I was recently before the, this play-in started, mm-hmm. and Vancouver was hot. Right, they're they? very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so, they're just they're so young. I'm just and not sure. Not, and the St. Louis defending champs. Well, I mean, just playoffs is just another another beast. Like we'll we'll probably get into last night's like game Boston, with Tampa you know, Bay and, Col- and, uh, and Columbus. We'll probably get into that. It's just it's a different game that you don't play on the regular season. So I I think St. Louis is better set up for that than St. Louis. Than okay, Vancouver's. I took. I also took St. Louis. <laughs> Wait, no, no, no. Sorry. I, it mixes me up here. I took Vancouver, okay. um, and I took them in six, which is kind of bold. I wish I took it in seven. Actually, I, think I have St. Louis in five. Okay, so if I okay, so really polarizing. So we're, we're, we're differentiating on the last two matchups, mm-hmm. so this should be interesting as it plays out. Mm-hmm. I got six games. You got five. We'll see how it goes. I wish I picked seven, though, as I just said. The other comment I want to make here is that this game, we're on Eastern time here in Toronto, and... The game starts at 10.30 p.m. Yeah. How the fuck am I supposed to watch that? Like, I watch the Dodgers. I'm a huge Dodgers fan. I watch the games every night. They start at, like, 9.40 last night. Mm-hmm. By the seventh inning, I'm, like, literally half awake, like, drooling on myself. Like, it's so fucking late. So I think – I wish they would start these games earlier. That's my whole thing. And yeah. I, my buddy, uh, he appreciates that. He works the night shift. Wyatt, he'll appreciate that. <laughs> shout, a quick <laughs> shout out there. He was, uh, he was text, uh, talking to me last night when the overtimes were going on. He's like, this is sick. I'm going to have games till three in the morning. I was like, nah, not really. I know they're West Coast, 1:30. but still, like, yeah. it's fucking, I mean, I wish, wish as an East Coaster that they'd start earlier. But Game, I feel like the West Coast of, guys complain about the early starting games Exactly. Too, like, so. they're still at work by the time games are starting. So, yeah, yeah, it makes sense. So, let's move on to the next round or the next matchup here. The next conference. Philadelphia Flyers versus the Montreal Canadiens. I this was an easy choice for me. I don't know about you. Who'd you take? Uh, Philly. Uh, they were they're young. Super Aren't they young hot. as shit? Uh, I wouldn't call them really young. They have they have both sides of it. They have like a really young goaltender. They have some really young defensemen. Um, but they got some older guys on their lineup too, like Voracek and Giroux. So um, they crash and bang. They did really well in their play in uh, games. So. Um, I, I like see them continuing that. Would you take them in how many games? Uh, four. four. <laughs> Quick sweep there. I have Philly in five. I think Montreal might snag one here and there. Here Montreal and there. really surprised a lot of people taking out Pittsburgh. I'd, I'm betting that nobody bet on them doing that. Uh, so kudos to them for that. But I don't know how long that magic continues. I think Philly's got what it takes in the playoffs. Philly in five. You got Philly in four. Philly in four. I think that was an easy choice. Next round, Tampa Bay versus Columbus. Uh, so we saw this. We saw series. this last. Yeah. Well, we saw this game last night, but this same series happened last year in the playoffs. Columbus and Tampa Bay played. Columbus was the eight seed. Tampa Bay was the number one. So basically, and a similar seeding this year. Columbus right? swept them last year. Um, so there's going to be a lot of, and they're not going to admit it in their press conferences. But there's going to be a lot of revenge on this game. Yeah. Uh, I took Tampa Bay to take it this time around. How many games? Seven. I took them in. Five, which I absolutely regret doing after watching that game last <laughs> yeah. night. I think Columbus is gritty as shit. Oh yeah, I think it's going to be. They're way not going to let it that. go easy. So that was bold. That's going to bite me in the ass for sure. But I took Tampa Bay. Oh, I feel really good about that one actually. Now after watching five overtimes to take them in seven games, yeah, it's, it's uh, going to be a fight. You're it's not going to know who's going to win that series literally until like second overtime in Game Seven. It's actually going to be pretty wicked. It's going to be a battle. All right, let's jump down to the Caps versus the Islanders. Took the Wash- Islanders. Did you now? Yeah, so that's one of my other underdogs. Okay, tell um, me why. Uh, the Caps are so wishy-washy. Um, their goaltending wasn't as great as you would anticipate it being. Braden Holpe is supposed to get big money um, for next season, and I just don't think he earned it. They're, like, they're starting their their rookie um, over him at the latter part of the season, and I just don't think that like past Ovechkin, like, if he's not hot... Isn't Johnny C not... 
not playing any there. Isn't he hurt? John uh, Carlson? I think he was game time decision Is for, for okay, today's he'll probably, game. He'll probably be fine then, I'm sure. Should be fine. He should be in. Um, but I pass to Veshkin, if, if he's not hot, I don't think that team stands up to any team in the in this playoffs. And well, the Islanders, again, they're one of those teams that's just built so deep in terms of experience and, and clutch factor. For sure. Um, plus their coaching, I think uh, – the Islanders could actually go really deep in this playoffs. How many games did you have them in? Uh, five. Five. Like Holy I, yeah. shnikes. Yeah, yeah. I, had, I had fucking the Islanders, in, or sorry, I had Washington in six. So I guess I little, you know, it's going to be a close series, and uh, I guessed, but mm-hmm. we both have another another different yeah. differentiating pick here. Like yeah. to see it. Love to see it. Last matchup, we just watched it live. I think we both prayed on this one. Yes. Boston versus Carolina. I took Boston in six. Because I just, you know, I've watched the Leafs lose to them a couple years in a row. Yep. Boston's always doing it in the playoffs. So I, that was an easy choice for me. Um, I said six games. What do you take? Boston and five. Boston and five. Ooh. Yeah. I think they're hot. Like, we've, we've asked yeah. me this a few times. Who's going to win the cup? And I, I say it time and time again. I think it's going to be Boston. Well, that was actually that's actually my next question. But I, you think Boston no-brainer for you here? Was that an easy choice? It or? wasn't an easy choice. Um, Carolina's, or not Carolina. Yeah, Carolina. They're... Like, you know how you build your bracket, right? And, like, I have Boston going to the very end to the uh, to Just win the, the cup. Or even winning. Wow, and nice. I would almost say that this is arguably going to be, like, the series that they struggle the most in, even though I took them in five. Um, they, well, they'd have to if, play Philly next, right? Would that be the next matchup? Uh, in my bracket. Philly won, Philly or Montreal. In my bracket, it's Tampa Bay. Oh, what? Mine's weird then. It's, it depends on who you pick. Oh, honestly, high seed versus lowest see, makes yeah. sense. Okay, so then that's T- TBD. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, I, this was an easy choice for me. I just, I know, I watch Boston. I don't watch a ton of hockey, but I've seen a lot of Boston. So. Boston didn't show a lot of what they can do in the play in rounds, so, or play in games that they had, or their seeding games, or whatever they called it. Yeah. Um, but I anticipate now that they're kind of warmed up, they got some older, bigger, slower guys that I think have got their joints moving again, and I, I think they'll be just mm-hmm. fine. I think they'll be better than just fine. I think they'll go all the way. So there you go. You heard it here first, boys. Um, Not first. I've said this a lot. <laughs> you heard it here second. You said it in the last episode. But just for the viewers' viewers' sake here, who did you have in your conference finals? And then I, you already said cup final, but I'll, I'll tell everyone mine after you sure. go. Uh, conference final for the East, I have Boston and the Islanders. So that's why I meant when I was talking about the Islanders and how okay. far they could go. I think they go all the way to the conference finals and lose to Boston. Okay. Um, and then on the western side of things, a little bit of less of an of an upset battle. I have Colorado um, up against St. Louis. Okay, so let me go now. I have I have the exact same thing in the West. I have St. Louis versus Colorado, okay. and I you know I picked underdogs in the first round to advance, and then I didn't in the to advance to the conference finals. <laughs> I have Philly versus Washington in the conference finals, and then really? I have St. Louis beating Colorado in the West to advance to the Cup, and then I have Philly beating. The Capitals to advance. Philly, you're going all the way. Philly, and I actually have okay. them winning. I have them winning it all because, as I said earlier when we were starting this, I like to pick differentiating teams. That's uh, uh, that's an interesting one. I wouldn't necessarily be able to to disagree with you wholeheartedly. I mean, it, I mean, I haven't paid I attention. Think only apparently, if I'm they looking, got the first seed. So I'm looking through. There's one. There's been oh more Phillies than I thought. Farhan has Philly. Well, because well, I guess three. Other than myself, there's three Phillies. With so. their seeding games, they ended up with the first seed. So, I mean, there's going to be a lot of people that don't necessarily know exactly what's going on that are picking Philly. Not that Philly doesn't deserve to go that far. They obviously have earned it, but. They have the sickest unis in, in hockey, too. We You hated me for that comment. I'm not even going to get into it. <laughs> We're not going to dive into man. that. But, <laughs> so, your cup final, Boston, I have. You have Philly, Boston over St. Louis. I have, I have Boston over Colorado. Oh, fuck. Okay, so we did switch there. Yeah. Boston over Colorado. I have Philly over St. Louis. So we have different, which mm-hmm. is nice. So we're yep. going to we're gonna see how it plays out. These were our brackets. We have, there's a total of 17 of us, so we'll see who wins out. We'll be <laughs> updating you guys on a weekly basis on our progress. But that wraps up the conversation today. Great chat with you, Dev, our NHL expert in office. I don't know shit about <laughs> NHL, so it's always nice to have a fresh opinion from you. But... If you haven't already, like, comment, subscribe down below, and we will see you next Tuesday. Fuck, I shouldn't have said see you next Tuesday. (laughs) Cheers. We have a very, very special edition. We are joined today by the one and only Josh Black, the head status updater at Owner's Box. He has some words for us regarding Devin Simser's employment. Hit us. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. And uh, I just want to apologize, first and foremost, for everything that Devin has said on this podcast thus far. 
none of it has been accurate. It's all been fake news. And uh, I want people to know that he should know who Joe Burrow is, who the first draft pick overall in the 2020 draft. He should know, since he's our NHL insider, he should probably get more than one series correct. He missed like five. He missed five straight. That's ridiculous. I mean, it saddens me. I hired him, so it's partly my fault. It falls on my shoulders. But, you know, so I'm here to say... To one, apologize, and two, Devin Simser has been suspended for two games. Boom. You heard it here first. See you, Dev. <laughs> <laughs>